Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for today's show. Uh, we've got some snow advisories out. Uh, winter weather advisories for snow occurring here along the northern southeast coast that uh, through tonight look for three to six inches of snow uh, throughout this area. I've uh, been snowing pretty good up around Haines on up to Skagway. Uh, and then kind of a mixture of rain or snow south of Juneau, but uh, this area heaviest amounts will be north of Juneau and uh, lighter to the south and just rain and gusty winds been occurring over the southern areas, but that front will move through and kind of stall out here over the northern area. So you could pick up uh, some pretty good snow overnight tonight. Up to the north, uh, we've got uh, winter weather advisories out uh, for tonight here through the Yukon Valley over toward Bettles uh, for the higher elevations seeing winds gusting as high as 30 or even uh, 40 miles per hour throughout the night tonight uh, until about noon tomorrow. So uh, some of those areas will be reduced in visibility uh, due to the blowing snow accompanying the winds. Up along the Arctic coast, uh, wind chill advisories going on, wind chills to 50 below. Northeast winds uh, gusting to 25 miles an hour here in these shaded areas, uh, eastern Arctic coast. Uh, uh, that lasts until about noontime uh, tomorrow, which time the wind should uh, drop off a little bit up there. But uh, kind of a trough here. Most of the moisture will be falling south of the Brooks Range. So in these areas, got the uh, winter weather advisory for snow. And again, these are wind chill advisories up along the coast. And moving along yesterday, we started to get a change you noise know, in the front pushing across Kodiak Island and that beginning to spread some milder conditions and clouds in across southern Alaska. In fact, some pretty warm air already yesterday up into the North Gulf Coast. Rain at Middleton Island, that slipped on up into Prince William Sound during the evening. Actually, much milder temperatures occurring this morning over south central Alaska. Pretty nice day there over the southeast coast. But this uh, low pressure area and frontal system, actually the low back in here, but that front uh, advancing toward the panhandle and it kept on rolling in today. You can see a lot of moisture, gusty winds, gale force winds here along the coast today. Uh, whole gales with gusts, uh, storm force gusts occurring over the inside waters ahead of the front, which uh, this morning was about in this position here. And the moisture coming back to the west, rain and snow or snow changing over to rain in the Yakutat area, then it cuts off here. Uh, probably some light snow got into the Wrangell Mountains, but just flurries up over the interior with a couple of bands uh, the remnants of the first one here bringing milder conditions and also picking the winds up. Uh, Delta Junction East gusts 45 miles an hour, temperature one degree below zero this afternoon. Uh, so the temperatures came up, but uh, the winds did as well. Other areas uh, not seeing as much wind, but the clouds and some light snow. A couple of bands in here of snow, one a little farther to the north, one back right through there and that area. Bethel was down to a quarter, one and a half miles in light snow, as well as McGrath, but that's shifting up to the north a little bit. Uh, Galena, Indian Mountain, kind of breezy there. And uh, this cold temperature is not clouds, but well below zero this afternoon up there over the north slope uh, into the minus 40s in some areas there. A lot of wind along the Arctic coast there with those wind chill advisories. IFR occurring much along much of the coastline up there and either snow, blowing snow, haze or a low cloud deck under a thousand feet and some of that down into the Bering Strait area as well. Uh, some light snow here over the Pribilos, temperatures just below freezing and today we had this system coming up with some light rain and snow. For example, uh, King Salmon carrying rain this afternoon, Dillingham snow, some light rain and snow getting into the southwest portion of Kodiak Island, uh, nothing at the state airport and then Here's the storm system with bringing the wind and heavy rain in across the central and southern panhandle with snow farther up to the north. And then the uh, tight gradient here right along the Alaska range, producing those gusty east winds and also the wind up here over the 
Arctic coast, especially on the west side. Pretty weak low here, so not a lot of wind there over the eastern Aleutians. And then the colder air up through here, kind of slipping off to the southwest there. So still some light snow over the Pribilofs, a weak trough through here with some light snow. Higher pressure over the central Aleutians. Pretty nice day, Adak and Atka. And then the next front here pushing up almost storm force winds into the Shimiat 2 area with gusts over 60 miles an hour this afternoon with snow or rain and snow mix. For tonight, this front moves on through, so the heavy wind and rain will be changing over to some scattered showers and more of a southwesterly wind in the uh, 15 to 30 mile per hour range. But the front uh, really big pushes off to the north or the east northeast. And so this front uh, will be stalled out over the northern area. So Again, looking to hang on to the snow here, especially from Juneau northward throughout the night tonight. Uh, again, three to six inches possible. Some moisture lingering along the North Gulf Coast, but fair over south central Alaska, right up into the Tanana Valley. Still pretty breezy here along the eastern uh, Alaska range on the northern slopes there for those east winds. And then some lingering flurries and variably cloudy conditions here with mostly cloudy skies back to the northwest. A little more widespread area of light snow or flurries here again lingering over Bristol Bay and the mainly the Kuskokwim Delta and then up the River Valley a little bit there dry along the Arctic coast but still pretty windy in those areas some moisture possible here over the northwest part of the state with that weak low near Kivalina or Red Dog and uh, the Bering Sea kind of an easterly flow so the cold air will remain in place here mostly over the northern areas and this front weakening but advancing eastward bringing a chance of uh, wind and rain into the central areas uh, later this evening and overnight tonight. And that'll push up into the eastern Aleutians tomorrow. So look for kind of a rainy day, but not too strong on the winds. A little gusty here, possibly over the eastern Aleutians. And then uh, rain or rain and snow mixed at times with very light amounts of the Perblofs. And then breaking out back behind with some higher pressure. Uh, could see some clearing out there. Definitely lighter winds. The area of snow here continues over the western and southwest interior, but that offshore flow will keep uh, conditions dry out along the coast. And again, uh, south-north flow for the most part here aloft and at the surface will keep the Arctic coast and north slope on the dry side. Uh, any chance of snow will be on the uh, southern slopes of the western range at this time. Clearing out a little bit here with dry conditions. Still a chance of some flurries or rain and snow mixed light here along the north Gulf Coast and on down into the panhandle of the next system, pushing rain up into Kodiak Island. Now continue north and then eastward, so it'll push another uh, front through the southeast coast tomorrow afternoon, uh, actually tomorrow evening, overnight tomorrow night, and that'll slip on eastward there, right along the Arctic boundary, which is still across the northern area. So you may not uh, get into the warm air at all up uh, Lynn Canal areas from, say, Haines on up into uh, Skagway, but you know probably it'll change over to rain at some point over the next 24 to 48 hours here with uh, rain or snow showers on down toward the southern areas. And looks like a, another shot of rain. And also as that front comes northward, possible gale force winds coming up to the North Gulf Coast. Also in advance of the system will be a return to gale force winds there over the pan. And again, that'll be tomorrow night. And then easing back a little bit to some small craft advisories here in the southwest winds that follow in behind. Fair conditions, still some breeziness there over the higher elevations of the interior and a chance of light snow with that trough along the west coast, but the Arctic coast remaining cold and dry up in that area. Chances of rain or snow, of course, south of the front, you'll see the rain on the north side, the snow. All that looks like it'll be pushed northward here of the Unalaska Nikolsky area, as well as much of the Alaska Peninsula and, of course, Kodiak Island. But I don't think any of this moisture will make it any farther north than the extreme southern Kenai Peninsula coast. Uh, possibly some of that will slip on up into the Whittier area, but uh, looking pretty good. Uh, no heavy wind or rain or any snow or very cold temperatures expected at all. Just kind of seasonal here over the interior on Monday. And then for temperatures this afternoon, Valdez 23 by contrast, minus 8 up at Golcana. 45, the warm spot down at Heidelberg. And Juneau had 32 degrees with snow, 23 up at Skagway. Moderate rain at Petersburg, 39 degrees. And the wind's starting to come down now at Sitka at 42. 32 over at Cordova and minus 12 at Northway. Two to above at Fairbanks, but Fort Yukon down to 35 below zero this afternoon. The cold spot up there at Umiat with minus 43. And at Tuvik, higher elevation, so they were up to zero. And uh, kind of cold up there with the wind along the Arctic coast. Again, IFR 
areas of all along the coastline there with those northeast winds and temperatures running 15 to 25 below, uh, more like 30 below around this point lay, minus 20 at Kotzebue, Buckland at minus 31, 13 below over at Nome, and uh, St. Mary's had one, but out along the coast below zero, one above over at Savunga, and nine at Macoriuk, 33 Cape Newenham with some gusty southeast winds and moderate snow occurring there, 29 at St. Paul, 41 in Alaska, uh, lower 40s, not too bad here over the Alaska Peninsula with that mild southeast flow and uh, upper 30s for the Aleutians. Lows tonight, uh, not much lower than you currently are here over the entire stretch of the chain there. Upper 20s for the Pribilofs, a uh, little bit of warming actually forecast for St. St. Lawrence Island. Well below zero again here over the interior. The coldest temperatures over the Yukon Flats down toward Eagle or where the winds let up. You'll drop into the mid-minus 40s there and a little above zero here over southern Alaska, then uh, just under freezing for Kodiak Island, 30s for the Panhandle. Highs for tomorrow, below zero north of the mountains, above zero, and in some cases along the coast, above freezing here, with uh, upper 30s, lower 40s for the Panhandle. IFR out in the west, Kodiak Island on up into the Gulf of Alaska, pushing into southern southeast Alaska, some more IFR over the central Bering Sea, but VFR over the central and eastern interior. So Anatovic starting out IFR and then becoming VFR. Just look for improvement throughout the day for that pass. I think Adigan will be VFR. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, occasionally VFR tomorrow looking pretty good. Rainy also looks good, wide open for windy. Isabel VFR either approach and Mentasta, pretty good VFR day for tomorrow. Tanita should be VFR. Portage uh, VFR, possibly some marginal VFR at times on that eastern entrance. If there is uh, IFR, that's where, where it'll be and should remain open on the west side. Chilkoot and White uh, starting out IFR early on and then it may take until late in the afternoon to become VFR. Freezing levels here, 2,000 feet up north of the eastern Aleutians now across Kodiak Island, north Gulf Coast and two to, uh, I'll say 6,000 feet there across the Panhandle. And for icing, uh, some possible rime or mixed icing below 9,500 feet there, Kodiak Island up toward Iliamna and then some leftover stuff here possible over the interior, but nothing too significant and then a little bit heavier stuff, but that's out over the Bering Sea. Upper level wind flow chart uh, showing the jet, the main jet, well to the south and then the Arctic jet well to the north. And so we're kind of in this uh, in between area here with a couple of weak disturbances bringing those flurries and clouds into the interior. Another one back there over Bristol Bay and then the one up over the Chuck CC. 9,000 foot wind flow chart showing 15 to 20 knots here out of the southeast. Lighter, more easterly over the interior, but up to 40 knots there out of the east for the east side of the coast. Uh, winds now shifting southeast of the Panhandle, so lighter winds coming up for uh, late tonight and tomorrow. Southeast 20, same thing at uh, 3,000 feet here, 20 to 25 knots southeasterlies over the west, lighter here off to the east, and turbulence uh, not too bad along the coast there, but still the Alaska Peninsula, especially Kodiak Island, occasionally moderate, and also along the eastern stretch of the Arctic coast. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Jim Peranto. Ever wonder what it would be like to have a one-stop go-to place for all your ocean data needs? Well, you're in luck. There's a place called the Alaska Ocean Observing System or AUSE and it's an impressive system that Alaskans can use to get information about past, present, and future ocean conditions for their local areas. And today I have the director of AUSE, Molly McCammon. Thank you for coming in, Molly. Thanks, Jim. So what exactly is AUS? What AUS is trying to do is um, do for ocean conditions what the Weather Service did for weather conditions. Basically take things that um, local governments are doing, that the federal agencies are doing, that the states are doing, and try to integrate them, pull them together, and, and make more out of all those various pieces. So what are the goals for AUS? Well, the goals are, are um, to make information more accessible, um, to find out what users of the marine environment really need, how, how do they make decisions, and then develop products to meet those, um, to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. And so the goals can range from um, 
providing a more safe marine environment information that will allow people to be safer, um, to improve oil spill response, to improve fisheries management, um, even improve um, aviation flying over, over marine areas. So describe some of the unique challenges to Alaska in trying to implement a system up here because it, it's totally different than some of the regional observation systems in the lower 48. Well, anyone dealing with the weather service here in Alaska uh -huh. knows that we're dealing with just a, kind of a, a small amount of observations compared to the lower 48 and outside. So that's one of the, the challenges that we have is, is we don't have a lot of buoys in the water. We don't have a lot of radar systems. Um, so we're really, in a lot of ways, starting from scratch. We have 43,000 miles of coastline. Uh, more than half <laughs> of the entire United States combined. So I mean, we have a huge challenge. We have extreme weather conditions. We have um, uh, remote power sources. Um, you know, we don't have roads along our coastline with a lot of, you know, kind of plug in and play type operations. So trying to do something that's sustainable, that's operational, that gives real time information to customers across the state, it's, it's, really difficult and challenging up here. Plus we have uh, winter weather, we have sea ice conditions, we have all of those things. Hey, you told me that you are investing heavily in a data management system with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Now why is that? When you look at um, what we're trying to do, which is pull in what all the agencies and all the various entities are doing, Key to that is a what we call an integrated data management system, kind of that one-stop shopping mm -hmm. area. So you have one website where you can go and you can get information that National Data Buoy Center is collecting. You can get information um, that USGS is collecting. You can get information that the university is collecting. And we try to pull those in together and then develop products. You know, something as simple as um, Measuring ocean temperature, you think, oh, that'd be easy. Everybody should be able to do that the same. But do you collect it in centigrade or Fahrenheit? Do you collect it in the morning or at night? Do you collect it at the surface or below the surface? And you start looking at how people are collecting all these bits of information, and, and that whole data piece is really one of the biggest challenges that we have. Talk to us about the Prince William Sound Pilot Project. What are you trying to do with that? With Prince William Sound, we took kind of a small tractable area and one that had already quite a bit of infrastructure in place. A lot of that is the legacy of the Exxon Valdez oil spill in 1989. A lot of it is um, just due to the fact of the, the tanker traffic there. But we thought if we can show and, and figure out what the issues are in a smaller area, then maybe we could scale it up and you know add on Cook Inlet, add on Southeast, add on the Bering Sea. So we started with Prince William Sound and we took what were the existing kind of observing platforms, the buoys mm -hmm. there. We're adding below surface instruments to the weather service buoys there. We're adding additional weather stations, snow tail sites, because they give a better gauge of the fresh water that's going into the system. We're doing boat surveys across the sound on a regular basis. Um, and Part of this, we're testing how does it work and, and is it cost effective and, mm -hmm. and are we really delivering the kinds of products that people want to use. And, and there's an ecological side to this too. It's not just a weather thing. I mean, you're doing, you're putting this in, uh, instrumentation in Prince William Sound to see how things are affected, you know, in the marine environment. Uh, right. Right? You start first with the physical pieces. So you want winds, waves, currents. Um, salinity, temperature, just some of those, you know, oxygen, some of those basic things. Then you start adding on the pieces of nutrients, phytoplankton, zooplankton. How does this affect fisheries production? How is this going to affect the oyster farms in Prince William Sound? Um, how is this affecting seabirds, marine mammals? You know, you kind of layer on top of that. But kind of the, the basic, you have to have that um, kind of that key area of winds, waves, currents. Right, right. So what other efforts are you engaged in across the state? Well, it, you know, this state is huge, and so um, we have the Prince William Sound project and our data system. We have a, a radar uh, site in Barrow that we've been helping to fund so that um, people in Barrow, the whaling community in particular, can see what the ice conditions are like, you know, right outside their front door um, and see if it's safe to get on the ice there and also see if there's going to be those breakout conditions where they have ice that comes out um, over the road or over the runways. Um, we have some moorings in the Aleutian Passes. A lot of the water 
that um, is in the Alaska Coastal Current actually goes through those passes and is now going into the Bering Sea, warming the Bering Sea, and then going north through the Bering Strait, warming the Arctic Ocean, and then ending up in the Atlantic. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I've, I've seen some things about deep ocean currents and how that all gets translated around the world. That's, uh, that's pretty fascinating stuff. And people are real um, concerned about the potential impacts of climate change. Yeah. So knowing what's happening with ocean conditions is really important for our fisheries production. It's important to know what's happening with sea ice conditions, which affects oil and gas development, uh, shipping. Subsistence living. Uh, subsistence living. living. Yep. Um, all those things are really, really key. Okay, bottom line, why is AUS such an important system? I think you just have to look out your window and, and almost everyone in Alaska either lives on the ocean or they live on a river system that flows into the ocean. We are deeply connected to ocean. It's the source basically of our weather and climate change. Um, it's the source of fish which sustains a lot of us up here. Um, and we need to do a much better job of knowing what's going on with it so we can make wise decisions about how we use it. Very well put. Um, you're advertising a use as a user driven system. So what does that mean? When uh, a lot of times when uh, you get scientists in a room they kind of go well this is what we don't know and this is what we want to know. We've done it a different way. We've gone to the community and the community is very broad so it includes the research community but it's also resource managers, it's subsistence users, it's commercial fishermen, recreational boaters, industries and say how do you make your decisions? What do you need? Where, where do you think you're most vulnerable? Just as an example, we went to um, some of the air taxi operators in Prince William Sound, and they said, you know, I wake up in the morning, I have to look at 12 different websites because I'm looking at webcams and getting weather information. Gee, I'd like to have that on one page. Mm -hmm. And so we developed a custom page for them that you can see all the webcams for Prince William Sound. You know what the weather is like in Whittier, Cordova, Valdez. And you can make a decision on how you're going to operate that day. That's outstanding. I have a feeling that we'll be using that at the Weather Service office, too. <laughs> <I think so>. <laughs> <laughs> Might be bookmarking that website. Well, thank you for coming in today, Molly, and uh, sharing your knowledge about AUS. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you would like to find out more information about this wonderful system, check out their website. It's www.aoos.org. You can also contact Molly at their Anchorage headquarters at 1007 West 3rd Avenue, and that's Suite 100 again right here in Anchorage. Thank you for joining us here on Alaska Weather Facts. Until next time. Welcome back. Well, mostly southwesterlies in the 15 to 25 knot range along the coast and still some small craft advisories early on here over the southern inside waters and then up there south of the front, depending on exactly where the frontal boundary lines up there, I think Lynn Canal will be mostly north at about 20. And then it'll be more northeasterly call it up to 25 at times there as the uh, pressure gradient increases a little bit across the northern areas but uh, southwesterly is 20 to 25 here and 15 to 25 knots over the inside waters and then moving along to south central Alaska uh, Cook Inlet north 10 to 15 mostly northeast to east 15 to 20 to 25 knots are along the east side of Kodiak Island otherwise easterly is 15 to 20 and for uh, the Monday outlook, uh, northeast 20 for Prince William Sound, and northerly's at about 15 there for Cook Inlet. Uh, picking up a little bit here across the Barren Islands, but uh, not much here. Kind of a southwest direction there along the east side of Kodiak Island. Well, Shillikoff Strait stays northeast 10 to 15. For the peninsula, uh, southeast 15 to 20 knots. A uh, little bit more easterly here for Bristol Bay. Small craft advisories continuing Sitkanak to say Chignik, and then those will swing around to the southwest and be lighter on Monday. Uh, much lighter here for Bristol Bay, just uh, barely a breeze at 10. Southeast up to 20 for the Alaska Peninsula. Out in the Aleutians, uh, gale force winds here westerly is up to 35, dropping back to 20 to 25 over the western areas. Small craft advisories here uh, for southeasterlies there, all the way over to Alaska. And then those will be lighter southwesterly, 15 to 20 knots here for the eastern Aleutians. Back around to the southeast up to 25 knots. Then swinging around to the northwest at uh, 15 here for the western chain. And then for the uh, Pribilofs, east at 15 tomorrow. Stronger winds here over the northern bearing, northeast to east, 20 to 
5 to 30 knots. And then everybody goes northeast here on Monday or Sunday night and Monday in the 20 to 30 knot range, but the Pribilof staying light with easterlies at 15. And then for the uh, Arctic coast, easterlies uh, 20, 25 to 30 knots there, highest over the east side with even possible gale force gusts uh, tomorrow morning. Much lighter here toward Cape Lisbon and northerlies at about 10, but those will pick up to uh, northeast uh, 10 here <laughs> for the Chukchi Sea areas. And then again, uh, in that uh, 15 to 30 knot range at times along the remainder of the coast. And for tonight, uh, again, looking for some uh, areas of snow here up along the Brooks Range and back toward this low center over the northwest. This trough, an area of snow, uh, light snow there from uh, northern Bristol Bay up into mainly the Cusquam Delta and the mid uh, River Valley area. Lighter amounts onto the northeast, just flurries, staying pretty windy, low wind chills here over the eastern Alaska range. Snow advisory with this system and that front stalled out over the northern panhandle there, uh, three to six inches up uh, toward Haines on up to Skagway. And then that will uh, kind of hang in place there through tomorrow. And then for Monday, it looks like uh, another system will slide through the area late Sunday night and early Monday and then change over to rain and snow showers in the afternoon. But the Arctic boundary staying put up there right along the coast and extending back like this, rain to the south, some snow to the north, but dry and occasionally breezy, especially through the mountain passes here over the interior. And right here on the edge of the picture, the next storm that looks like it'll uh, first push some moisture in toward the southeast coast with probably a return to some gale force winds uh, during the day on Monday there with rain into the panel. But the main low center looks like at this point will pull up toward the Alaska Peninsula and spread gale force winds and rain back into Kodiak Island. Otherwise, a pretty nice day tomorrow or for Monday. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.